Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit Wellness Coaching Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor, and you're listening to the How May I Serve You podcast, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clientele by asking them, how may I serve you? Today's show is sponsored by Get Up and Get Fits. Get Up and Get Fits will, will, will be providing students with textbooks and school supplies in Cambodia in honor of our guests today, as well as our philanthropic mission to impact at least 50,000 people per year. And today's guest is, guess what? It's Lisa Henselman. How you doing, Lisa? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Welcome to the podcast. So Lisa of Ill Illumination Consulting is fascinated by the why and passion of business owners and professionals. As a business, sales, and leadership coach, Lisa invests her time and energy in empowering individuals and organizations to be successful. How would you like to work not only in, but on your business to achieve the results you desire? Okay, so work not only in, but on. Okay, I like that, Lisa. Yes. So, Lisa, let's uh, learn a little bit more about you, right? So, give me the two-minute version of who you are and where you're from. I am uh, Lisa Heinzelman with Illuminations Consulting, coming to you from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And as, a, and as a business sales and leadership coach, I'm investing my time and energy in empowering individuals and organizations to be successful. So I'm working with entrepreneurs, small business owners, commission professionals, direct sales, network marketers, to really help you develop your strategy and competitive edge, to think about the problems that you solve, the value that you bring, and why do business with you. All of that drives your marketing and your sales process, so you provide the opportunity for your customers to buy and clients to engage. Now that we're into April of 2022, it's a great time to think about why and how you're working not only in, but on your business as you continue to grow throughout the year. Okay. All right. That sounds good. So Lisa, let's, normally I like to dive into our guest background, lifestyle, childhood. So let's dive into that because I, I know you're from PA, right? So how were how were things in PA when you was growing up, right? I want you to describe to me your childhood. My childhood was fantastic. I grew up actually in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the same area that I'm in, only live about five miles away from my childhood uh, home. I still wow. have my I still have my dad who is with us. We okay. lost my mom uh, two years ago, uh, but she is certainly in my uh, heart. My mom and dad had some real influence uh, with and for me throughout my years. Uh, early on, one of my early comments when I was two years old to my mom was, I will do it my known self. I couldn't even say the words correctly, but I was already being encouraged to be independent and uh, think and problem solve for myself. And my mom and dad encouraged me throughout my life from early on about do what I want to do, how I want to do it and pursue my passion. And today that carries on in my life in working through and with Illuminations Consulting to help others to do the same. So they get a lot of credit for why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Okay. It sounds like they did a phenomenal job nurturing you and give you the, the reinforcement to be an independent person. You know, that's important, especially at that age, you know, when you're, when you're young, um, around that time frame, that's when we develop our personality from the third trimester to age seven. That those are crucial times right there. Yes, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. So let's dive into coaching, right? Why coaching? Why did you decide to even tap into this arena? What inspired you to become a coach? I began my career in early childhood education. Okay. And I was fascinated about why and how uh, children learn. And actually, that came from my schooling over the years that I kind of wondered about why things worked for me in some ways, why things didn't, uh, how I was able to remember some things and not necessarily be as prepared as I wanted to for some tests and those mm -hmm 
types of things. So I decided to study some of that. And I worked in early childhood and elementary education and eventually into teaching college to, uh, to, for teacher preparation. And as I was working in my classroom and also supporting others and working through uh, professional development and quality initiatives across the state of Pennsylvania, it was powerful what kind of impact I could have within my own classroom and also supporting others to do the same. So very early on in my career, I was I was implementing best practices myself and then had great mentors and teachers and support around me who were who were supporting my professional development, which led me to support others in the same way. A number of years ago, I uh, I sat on a, a board with uh, the Department of Education in the state of Pennsylvania. And as we were working on teacher certification guidelines, there was too much conversation about testing mm. than about learning. Mm. And so I decided that I needed to pivot. And so I pivoted before pivoting was cool. If you think <laughs> about the people who are making changes now because of the pandemic. And so I decided I was going to work with the big kids instead of the little kids. And because I'm old enough over that time, those same little kids that were the cool kids that were thinking and problem solving and figuring things out from early childhood are adults now who are working in their own businesses, pursuing their passion, uh, working in and with and for organizations. And from that time in education, I really noticed the gap between education, workforce, leadership, business, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so today I'm bridging that gap of making sure that people have the tools and resources that they need to be successful within their careers and uh, businesses. That's amazing right there. So being in the position that you were before, like previously you saw a problem, right? And you took yourself out of that position because you wanted to create a solution. And then you went out and you connected yourself with the right resources, the right mentor, the right education. And now you, you're able to develop a solution, you know. So kudos to you for Thank stepping you. up and taking action. Because some people, they'll just they'll talk about it and then they'll just complain about it and that's it. But you, you, you decided to take action, right? This is also why I love to connect myself with coaches because coaches, they are always taking action. And not only do they take action, but they go forward to helping others to see it as well. So let's now let's talk about your coaching style. With this uh, this style, um, the solution that you've created, right? How do you structure your coaching to get to your clientele? Like, describe your style to me. Are you or uh, are you a cheerleader? Are you practical? Are you more of a you know? Um, do you use guidelines? Like, talk to me about your coaching style. Because I come from education in my background, one of the things that I learned is that one size did not does not fit all. And so my hats come on and off and my approach uh, changes as it needs to for and with my clients. Okay. I am particularly about exploring and implementing best practices with my clients. And when I say best practices, that again, does not mean one size fits all. So in some approaches related to branding, marketing, or sales is not the same thing that, that I would do that work for Lisa, that work for Thomas, that work for Brian, or whoever it may be. And I'm, I'm very hands on in the work that I do with my clients and also spread that out as I need to for how my clients are learners in, in, in exploring those best practices and implementing them. And I celebrate what I got to learn from education to take my clients from where they are to where they want to be. Awesome. Awesome. And, um, you also mentioned personal development. And that's one thing that I've, I've noticed with coaches, they tend to invest a lot in personal, personal development and working with leaders, right? Working with business owners. It's so important to be able to implement 
um, personal development um, because you're working with people, right? You're working with people. So when you're working with your clientele, how how do you um how do you apply personal development to them? How do you um I guess disseminate according to their learning style? You know, can you, can you give me like a like a breakthrough, like a breakdown for me? So <clears throat> I incorporate personal, professional, business, and organizational development in what okay. I do. And to develop within our business, we need to develop ourselves at the same time. And one of the things that I think is really important is that we need to begin with our why and our purpose as we are growing our business. Lots of times we start a business by creating a website, a business card, doing some kind of marketing, and then we say, where are my clients? Mm. And we've missed, unfortunately, developing that strategy overall. So, so first of all, really thinking about our why and our purpose leads to thinking about and articulating your vision, your core values, your mission, your competitive edge. One of my competitive edge areas, which is what I call the problems that you solve and the value that you bring, is pulling the words out of somebody's head, heart, and soul that that is based upon their passion, why they're doing what they're doing. So some of the personal development that comes out of the work that I do with my clients relates specifically to mindset, mm -hmm. confidence, leadership, and motivation as they are working themselves as solopreneurs and becoming leaders within their organizations. Awesome. I, mean, I love that. You, you broke it down into bits. And those are all very, very important. So I want you to put your foot in the shoe of the prospect, right? Your clients or a consumer, right? Or just a, a, a person that's curious about coaching, right? A novice. So if this person were to look, we're looking for a coach, they're in, in the discovery process. What traits would you advise for them to look for? I think that they need to find somebody who they connect with. I think that they need to have need to work with somebody who first listened to them and their story and where mm -hmm. they are and asked a lot of questions during that process. There are a lot of people who are sharing out programs and courses and saying, this is the next best thing for you. And those are oftentimes leading with, this is what I can do for you. And this is the problem I can solve. And you're missing this if you don't engage. And a lot of those are led in a transactional kind of way that that person is selling their program that they're offering, which is different than being consultative in your practice and listening to and understanding where somebody is and then and then and then making recommendations about why and how you can support that individual. So I encourage you as you are exploring those opportunities to be working with a coach that they are finding out and learning as much about you before they're saying, I got the thing that will change your life. Excellent, excellent advice. And I agree with Thank you, you wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> because um, in the beginning, when I was a novice, I dealt with that, right? I dealt with coaches that had, you know, specific guidelines without even hearing what I needed. So right. I, I definitely understand 100%. So I want you to talk to me about your coaching practice, like your structure, do you just work with one-on-one -on -one clients or do you also work with small groups? Like what's your, your structure like? I have, I have basically two kinds of structures in a way from what you're sharing or what you're asking. I work with, uh, solo entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, and, and small business owners that might have employees as well on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help them to develop their strategy, their competitive edge, their marketing and their sales process, why and how they're investing their time and energy, 
how they're becoming a leader, uh, developing a team of peak performers through communication to take their businesses to the next level. I generally work with my clients on a weekly basis and then okay. spread that out to monthly as an accountability partner mm -hmm. over the time that we work together. And like I mentioned, uh, those are very customized for them as far as where they are and what they're trying to accomplish. In a second aspect, I work with executives, managers, and sales teams within organizations, particularly where you're promoting your super workers to then mm -hmm. be supervisors and become great managers. So I might work with any level within an organization connected to that executive team for what is it that they're trying to accomplish within their organization from a strategic standpoint. And then making sure that everybody knows uh, what 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 their what that the strategy is, their roles and expectations, what productivity looks like, and then accountability. And most often in those situations, I work with those teams on a weekly basis, and again spread that out to monthly as an accountability partner as well. It makes a whole lot of sense in that aspect because we are exploring and implementing best practices mm -hmm. and then we're creating habits to make that happen. And I want them to fly and be free and be able to continue with those best practices in their organization. A lot of my clients do stay with me after our initial engagement as an accountability partner on a monthly basis, if that's what if that's what makes sense, because they're continuing to grow and develop over that time as lifelong learners and growing within their organizations. Understood. Understood. So um, how do you typically get clients do you um is it through via networking or are you doing any type of outreach via social media or are you doing any type of press release like talk to me about that process sure i do a lot of networking i have grown my business um i'm celebrating my 22nd anniversary uh here in april Congratulations. Um, and i have and i have really grown my business through networking uh, I love networking. My target market is out networking because they're looking to develop relationships to plan, develop and grow their businesses. Uh, so I network. I have then a lot of one on one conversations with those people I meet through networking. I also engage on social media, which was one of the examples that you brought up. I particularly engage on LinkedIn, Facebook and Alignable. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to choose two or three platforms that you are then good at, that you can be consistent, that you, that's where you're finding your target market. I got consistent with my social media posting and engagement uh, two years ago. So I'm in my third year of being consistent with posting on social media on those platforms and then I and then I culminate my weekly posts into a newsletter that's sent out on a monthly basis. Nicely done. Yes. Last year I added a quarterly newsletter as well, which is specifically focused on your business seasons. So it comes out in March and June, September, December. So we're always talking about that next quarter, if you will, of how we're planning, developing and growing our businesses. I do speaking engagements as well that are related to the best practices that I engage with my clients. A lot of those speaking engagements are connected to my networking. So it's really those three areas of networking, uh, social media, and speaking engagements. Nice, nice. Okay, those are some solid areas right there. Thanks for sharing that with us. So now we're going to dive into story time, right? Because I love stories. Um, all my listeners know this. <laughs> so I want you to share with us a time when you utilize your process to help move your client from a difficult situation to a success, right? Or towards success, I should I should say. Um, give me like the two to three minute version, right? Just right now, I want to live vicariously through you, your client. All right. Uh, so I have two to share, if that's okay with you. Okay. Um, my first one is a realtor that I had the opportunity to engage with. 
And, and I, I engage with people at different places during their, their life and business cycle. So she was already a successful realtor. And what was interesting was one of the things that happens in that industry is that you become very reactive because you're solving problems and bringing value and answering phone calls uh, throughout throughout your work. And if any of you are familiar with what's happening in the real estate market, things are happening very fast these days. And I worked with her a couple of years ago and time was really an issue for her. And one of the breakthrough uh, pieces that we worked on, I have a document that I use when we're talking about time strategies for mm -hmm. success. And it gives you four quadrants to think about of is this particular task uh, something that is important and urgent? Is it important, but it's not urgent? Is it important, but it but uh, it, it is it, it is, uh, is is it urgent, but not important or is it not urgent and not important? She put that document, which was one of the worksheet activities that I had available. Uh, for her onto a clipboard to mark every day has things were coming in for her to do and put them into the right categories because she was somebody who no matter what was coming in, everything was urgent and important. And what that gave her was that freedom of why and how she was investing her time mm. to be attentive to each of her clients throughout that process and really make things happen. Has she got control of that based upon her why and her purpose? She really increased her business by 27 percent in that first year of us working together. Nice. And it was really powerful to see what it was that um, she was able to do and able to do with confidence, even though we think we need to be available 24 seven to our clients. If you're available in the next five minutes for every person that needs to talk with you, how are you being valuable to either the person who you are with and 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 being and, and and that and that you are working with a number of people. We all want everybody to think that you're our only client. But if you're a painter and you're available to paint at my house tomorrow, you might want to think about is that painter the very best one? Because why is in why aren't they painting at somebody else's house? And then you wait for them because that is valuable. Nice, nice, nice. That's great right there. So you was able to help her win back her time by being able to prioritize with your with your your, your chart, right? Your sheet, right? Um, so she had a she had a structure, she had something that was visible, right? And she was able to use that to guide her <laughs> or when it came to trying to figure out what was important and what wasn't important or what was urgent and what wasn't urgent. And right. oftentimes we get in our own way. Yes, that's, that's a great, great strategy you realized right there. So thanks for sharing that story. Yes. All right. You mentioned you had, you had two stories. Um, you have one more? Do you have time for one more? Go for it. Let's go for it. Well, <laughs> one of my other stories that I'm uh, very excited about is I had, I, I actually still work with them. Um, I had the opportunity to work with an individual who was a second generation uh, business owner. And okay. so he worked within, within the business first through production and sales and everything related to the business until it was transitioned over to him as the business owner. And so uh, I met him during the time through networking mm -hmm. uh, that he was beginning that transition. So we just, he decided that he wanted to work with me to work on becoming that leader and transitioning from the working in the business to working on the business and becoming that visionary leader uh, within his organization. 
So we began with developing that strategy overall. Certainly things already existed because of that business being in business for quite a number of years. Yet that transition of then making that his own, that that created the vision, the core values, the mission, the competitive edge. Mm-hmm. So we worked together over the course of a year uh, with developing that aspect of that leadership and um, and and the branding, marketing, sales process, and why and how we're investing our time. At that time, he had an admin who was the uh, one individual who was working within the office. Today. I have had the opportunity over the past uh, good year and a half to work with that person who was the admin, who Mm -hmm. is now the general manager of that organization. Okay. And there's there are now three other people who are doing her job at that point in time as the admin uh, taking care of uh, the other aspects of the business. And so when I mentioned before about that, we're promoting our super workers to then be supervisors and become Mm -hmm. great managers. She was working in the business in all of those admin aspects. And she has arrived now to become a leader and a manager within that organization overall that also lets her 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 business owner be that visionary be that research and design person and so it's great the opportunity that I've had to have an impact with their organization to continue to develop and grow hmm, hmm, hmm. that's that's amazing right there that's amazing so um, it sounds like you do a very great job with helping, like I said, the managers get to the next step and helping the the owner of the company to become what they're good at, the visionary, right? The idealist, the the, the big thinker, right? So, I mean, I'm liking this. And you have you have these uh, these structures that has been successful, you know? So it's, it's a proof. It's not just a concept. It's proven. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? So there you go. So- Lisa, I want I would like to know this. What drives you to I mean you've been doing this for you mentioned like 22 years, right? 22 years? Yes. What is driving you, you know, to continue getting out of bed every morning and coaching these individuals? Like what's the driving force behind behind this, behind you? I'm excited every day to hear about, learn about why people want to do what they want to do. Okay. And if we think about it, we know people who have worked in a in, in, in a job or a role for 20, 25, 30, whatever years, and oftentimes had a passion that they really wanted to pursue. And then they either did that as a side hustle or they just kind of continued to think about it. Mm-hmm. We're having a lot more people today who are who are ready to pursue that passion even after they're retiring from some other role. I am I am excited and fascinated about why people want to do what they want to do. And there are a ton of resources and tools that are out there. I am continuing to gather those best practices and then make sure that they're in their hot little hands. And the very best that comes out of that is when that light bulb moment comes on. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize how easy this could be and and how I could implement this and use these tools and resources. I'm about I'm about being efficient, effective and productive. And so we work smart, we achieve results and we celebrate often. And when I have any of those things happening, that is so powerful. And one of the things as entrepreneurs is we often are thinking big picture and we're often jumping from one thing to the to the next. And 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 what are our other opportunities? And one of the pieces that I think is so powerful is it's important for us to celebrate often and it's important for us to integrate best practices into what we're doing Mm -hmm. and to do that. 
we need to celebrate our strengths of what we're already doing and continue to do those activities. We need to think about our areas for growth and identify those ideas to develop. And here's my favorite one that I just added in an, in an articulated kind of way. We need to break habits that are no longer efficient, effective, and productive. I like that. I like that. Reason why I like that because that's what I do with my practice as a as a wellness coach. We focus on habits, right? And yep. I, look, what he's what he's saying right now, you how you you going towards the direction of intentionality. You have to be intentional with everything you do. This is what I'm hearing. Yes. Awesome. So, Lisa, are you currently working on any new projects that you could share with us? Um, as I mentioned, I launched uh, Quarterly Quest for Success, which mm -hmm. is a new quarterly newsletter. I had always been sharing information about how are we kicking off 2022? How are we staying focused? Uh, through throughout the spring when we when we kick off in the beginning of the year and we have all of our goals and then are we continuing to implement them? How are we staying engaged over the summertime when people are vacationing and want to sit back and relax? How are we making sure that throughout the fall we are going ready to wrap up the year strong and and people get distracted to say well i'll wait till january to see mm -hmm. you and we might start that in november as we're getting into holiday mode and so i'm very excited about that newsletter that i share out that is about being intentional as you just said that we're investing our time and energy throughout our business seasons in any way that they fall during during a given year so that uh, that that newsletter is out there for anybody who would want to subscribe. It's called Quarterly Quest for Success, and you can uh, find more information about that on my website. Okay, all right. So, if someone were to inquire about that newsletter and your other services, where can they go to um, find you in the in the also the newsletter? Yes. Uh, so my website is uh, www illuminationsconsulting.com so you can find best practices and information there about why I'm doing what I'm doing. I have a number of uh, one page or downloads that are about time strategies, LinkedIn strategies, networking strategies for success that you might find valuable there. I always welcome the opportunity to chat with you because I'm fascinated about why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You can email me at lisa at illuminationsconsulting.com. As I mentioned, I engage on LinkedIn and Alignable and Facebook. So if you are there, I will connect with you in any of those ways as well. Thank you, Lisa. So Lisa, um, I would like to thank you for coming on today's episode of How May I Serve You? And I also like to thank all of our listeners and viewers for lending us the ears and the eyeballs. And I have one last question before we part ways. And that is, how may I serve you, Lisa? Uh, you are serving me here today as we're having this conversation. And I'm getting to think and process out loud about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I celebrate the, the correlation that you made about why you're doing what you're doing related to uh, serving your cu customers in in um, get up in and get fit and how it is that we are processing through those uh, health and wellness lifestyle and so i celebrate being connected to you and staying connected to you as another leader within personal professional business uh growth so thank you very much and i look forward to continuing to collaborate with you thank you lisa you're all, you're awesome <laughs> Again, this is your host, Thomas Johnson. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to share it with someone that will benefit. And make sure to tune in for next week's episode. Take care, be blessed, and cheers. We're out.